Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Ask Brixie, episode 11, right on. So today we're going to be answering some questions that were submitted in the last episode of Ask Brixie, and if you want your questions answered in a future episode, make sure you throw them down in the comment section below. The first question has to do with Lego boxes. The first viewer asks, do you save all the boxes of the sets you own? If yes, could you show us? Keep up the great work. Well, thank you so much. I plan on continuing to build Lego and stuff like that, but what do I do with my boxes? Well, not too long ago, I made a big change and decision, and I decided to get rid of all of my boxes, and I did that in a vlog style video, and now the people that collect my recycling every week get my boxes. So yeah, I throw them away because I don't plan on really selling any of my Lego sets, so I don't really see a point of keeping all of my boxes because they take up a lot of space. The Flash. He asks, uh, have you ever considered buying the custom display stands for your own collection such as the UCS Millennium Falcon and a bunch of other sets? Love the channel. Well, thank you so much, The Flash. I do definitely like some of the display stands out there. In particular, Wicked Bricks make some wicked display stands for Lego minifigures that can be mounted to the wall and also for all the different Lego Star Wars starships. I just think that if I do go that route, the sets themselves will actually take up a lot more space because it'll take the X-Wing or the Millennium Falcon and tilt it upward, meaning the shelf has to be further apart. Therefore, I haven't really tried any out, but I know they would do a really good job of displaying Lego sets, especially the Starships. I would eventually like to try some of those out. And I know they also sell like display cases and stuff like that that prevent your Lego from getting dusty. But I just know that in general, if integrating those into your or with your Lego sets, it's going to take up more space on your shelf. So that's sort of why I've stayed away from it at this point. Alex asked a question here in regards to the amusement park. He says, would you ever not have an amusement park? By the way, it's my favorite part of your city. Well, it's one of our favorite parts of the city too. Jose and I love amusement parks. We love going to Disney World. We love going to uh, Universal Florida, stuff like that. Also, we love all the different Lego Creator Expert rides. So no, I don't think I would ever get rid of the amusement park just because it looks so good. It's never looked this good. It's got the Disney castle. It's got the roller coaster, the Ferris wheel and so many other rides like the drop ride, the mixer, the carousel, and so many minifigures are just telling different stories in the amusement park as well. So we love the amusement park, it's never looked better, and no, I don't think we'll ever get rid of it. And we're happy with the amount of space that it's currently consuming. Calamity asked me a question in regards to what I do for a living. How did you start exactly with your Lego job? I watched your video like how you started all this, but what kind of job did you want when you were a teenager? I'm thinking a lot of uh, being like you someday, but I don't even know how to start for real. I'm 14 right now, but I only got a lot of Lego sets, and I want to start with a Lego city, but how did you start with all that? So essentially he's asking, how did I start this Lego YouTube channel? Honestly, it just started randomly, right? Like I've said before, I just started collecting Lego, and I had so much passion for Lego, and it's something that I did when I got home from my job. I work retail. What did I want to do when I was a kid? Well, I didn't know that I wanted to do this. I always had a video camera on me. I was always filming videos and stuff like that, but I didn't know how to publish them on YouTube. So I guess from a certain point of view, I was into the whole filming thing. There's an old school camera. But yeah, I didn't really know what I wanted to be when I was a kid. But if you're young and you're 14, I'd recommend finding what you want to do and finding out what you're passionate about and pursuing a dream at a young age that will help you excel. I've seen a lot of YouTubers who started at a young age and they're still doing it today and they still love their job, uh, whether it be in the YouTube or in the Lego field or any other field out there. So if you want to become a YouTuber, start and work as hard as you can toward becoming a YouTuber. If you want to become a school teacher, just you know start trying to become that person that you want to be and then it'll happen. Uh, just work hard toward what you want to be and try and figure it out at a young age. I wish I knew that I wanted to do this at a young age because I would have started a lot earlier and been a lot further along than I am now. But guess what? We're actually pretty far along right now. We're almost at 200,000 subscribers. So thank you so much, everybody. But yeah, my best advice to you as a young 14-year-old, 
is just to work hard and pursue your dreams. Top Gear Shorts asks a controversial question that I don't really have an answer for. Do you ever think Lego will go out of business because it's getting too expensive or because they use plastic that is bad for the environment? I think that the Lego group is going to continue down the road that they're currently on and continue producing awesome Lego sets and awesome toys that appeals to a wide variety of people, different age demographics and people from around the world. And I think they're going to continue doing that and doing a tremendous job of having their products appeal to a broader audience, just like they've been doing recently. They've been making grand pianos and typewriters and Fender guitars and all sorts of different things from Marvel superheroes to DC to uh, Harry Potter. So there's all sorts of licenses and themes and different types of branding, Adidas Superstar, and all these different things that they've done to attract a new audience and a broader audience and keep their product going. From an environmental standpoint, I think they're working on that as well. They're slowly converting over to paper bags and they're looking for a new way to make a sustainable brick using plant-based products. So I think they know that the environment is important and I think they're gonna to work toward improving their effect or their footprint on the environment. So I think, I don't think they're ever gonna go out of business. I, don't, I honestly don't. They're one of the biggest toy manufacturers in the world and they sell one product that's Lego. It's not like it's Hasbro where they're producing board games and card games and action figures and stuff like that. They're producing one product and they're one of the biggest toy manufacturers in the world. I think they have such a big audience that's never been bigger. Sure, it might go down a little bit. Some people might stop collecting and they might get back to normal because there's a lot of people that started collecting during the pandemic. But I think that there will always be a demand for Lego. And even if their company goes out of business, which I don't think it'll ever will, I still think there's going to be a lot of people like myself that are still collecting Lego and still doing it because we're so passionate about it. So I think even if Lego is not in business, there'll still be lots of people that collect Lego and there'll still be a huge market for Lego no matter what happens. Morbid Sin says, uh, will you do an update on the medieval set soon? Uh, would love to see that area get developed. The medieval area here underneath the Lego city is a little bit of a disaster right now. <laughs> I'm waiting for the Merps to go on sale. Well, no, not go on sale, but I'm waiting for the Lego group to do double points. Then I'm gonna order 100 more of those rock panels right there that build that waterfall. Now, the reason I haven't continued on it is because I've been working on other stuff here in the Lego room, uh, specifically in the Lego city. So once we get those projects done, there's some huge changes happening to the downtown core, as you've seen recently, and also way over there in the beach area, there's been some big changes as well. And we've got to make a bunch more structures for that area. Once we have some of that stuff done, and I order some more parts and pieces to work on this project, then we're going to continue working on the medieval scene and also the giant uh, battle that's going to be happening here between the two castles. It is something that we will be doing this year 100%. That's a guarantee. It's just a, a process of time allocation and also part allocation and budget allocation. But once we uh, get some projects done up top here, uh, such as the stuff that we're working on in the beach area, then we're going to continue working on the medieval scene underneath the Lego City. Uh, Troy asked a question here that I've actually answered before in its own separate vlog. It's called My Unfulfillable Dream or something like that. Uh, he says, have you ever considered taking the brand in a retail direction? Uh, Edmonton desperately needs a dedicated shop and form for collectors to buy, sell, and trade. Most shops around glance over Lego and don't have the same passion and drive to source retired Lego sets and parts and minifigures and stuff like that at fair prices. I would love to do that. It's part of my dream. I would love to open Brixie Studios where we have a big focus on buying, selling, and trading Lego. I just don't think I have what it takes I don't have enough time in the day or enough energy to have a retail business and have my YouTube channel operating at the current capacity that's operating. I just don't think I have the capacity of doing both sectors. I think I would start to spread myself too thin. If you want to see a full breakdown on that video, make sure you check out the carded video that popped out during me talking about all this because I go into that into in more depth. So that's my 
opinion on me opening a retail store. I would love to, but I just don't think I have enough time. Nathanos asks, what would be your dream pop culture modular building? I don't know. I would like to see a better Avengers Tower, but I've already built an Avengers Tower and a whole bunch of people all over the LEGO community have already built better Avengers Towers. But I think they should have done a bigger, better Avengers Tower just like the Daily Bugle. I think that would be huge. And I don't know why they haven't done that yet. Uh, maybe an Avengers Compound, that would be good. But of course they could do a different Wayne Manor or they could also do a Wayne Enterprises or the Justice League Hall of Justice. Yes, that would be really cool. The Hall of Justice. I would love to see that. We actually have two questions in regards to Winter Village. So right now our Christmas sets are all set up on the shelves just right over there. Uh, Connor says, would you ever consider building a snowy mountain and putting the Christmas sets on top, sort of like a Winter Village? And then Anton says, I know you just put all of your Christmas Lego sets under the table area, but are you gonna make a Christmas display somewhere in the city? I love the channel so much. Well, Connor and Anton, I would love to make a Christmas display. I'm thinking of doing that in 2022, taking all of our modular style buildings and making a mill style Christmas display and sort of testing mills out. I don't know where we're gonna have room for that is the problem and I don't really wanna build that and then tuck it underneath the table. That would look, be sort of silly. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna have space for a mountain. A mountains would be really cool. It's sort of like what we're building in the medieval section down there, sort of like a cliff edge, sort of mountain style thing. I don't have a direct answer for you on that and I'm pretty sure we're gonna do something in regards to a mill style winter village this year in 2022 with all of our winter village sets, but I don't think we're gonna be putting a mountain in the city that's gonna host a winter village. XTY asks, would you ever consider making a separate Star Wars Lego room so that those sets aren't just displayed on shelves? That would be so cool. I've seen some really neat Star Wars rooms out there like Trevor, he has one. Also Peter, he has one as well. I've seen some wicked Star Wars rooms. I don't think I'm ever going to make a separate room for my Star Wars sets though. I just don't have the capacity, especially in this house. And if I ever do move to a bigger area, I have talked about um, maybe getting an acreage and building a large steel shed and it would just be the same. There'd be shelves around the exterior and large Lego city in the center. Uh, but we could maybe once again, integrate the Star Wars stuff into a better display. Maybe we'd have enough space to use some of those display stands that we were talking about to make a better Star Wars display within that room. I don't foresee me expanding this Lego room anytime in the near future, unless we actually had the capacity to move to an acreage like I've talked about in a previous video and build a large steel shed for all of our Lego. All right, this is probably one of the most asked questions that I get all the time. Maya Jacobson asked me, how much do you think your collection is worth? So I'm gonna tell you right now, I have no idea what the exact number is. It's really hard to put a value on it because the prices of Lego are always fluctuating based on supply and demand, whether or not they're retired, what they're selling for in the aftermarket price, whether you have your box or not, whether you have the instructions and all the pieces and all the minifigures and stuff like that. I know that I've personally bought essentially all of my Lego and all of the minifigures and pieces and everything are all together, but I've also bought a lot of ball cloths from Kijiji. That's where all these parts are from. And I've also bought a lot of pick-a-brick stuff, a lot of stuff on BrickLink bulk piecewise. So I have no idea how to put in a concept of how much money all of these sets are worth and how much, how much like all of the base plates and pieces and everything in this room is worth. With that said, I think the best place to go to log your collection and essentially find out how much it's worth is to go to brickset.com. On brickset.com, you can log your collection. So you can see at the top here, I have 987 sets. Now keep in mind, I haven't logged my entire collection. There's for sure some stuff down there that I've forgotten to put on this list. Now, what's really cool about this website is you can actually use it to sort of sort and filter your collection. You can do it by theme. You can also do it by year. So you can see all of the different sets that you have from all of the different years or themes. Now, another cool thing about this website is you can also see how many minifigures you have and what's on your wanted list. And you also can go right here over my sets and you can view an overview of your collection. This is gonna bring you to a tab that's gonna show you a bunch of statistics about your collection. So 
on the 987 items that I own, 729 of them are unique. And then right down here, you can see that we have piece counts for 724 of your sets and it's 651,710 pieces. And they have retail prices for 678 of the nearly 1,000 sets and it's valued at 57,245 US dollars. Now, I think that's a little bit of a low ball there because it doesn't include all of the thousand sets. It's only 678 sets and it doesn't include all of the stuff that I bought from local classifieds or from Bricklink or anything like that and all the bulk pieces and minifigures. Now, another really cool thing that you can do is you can actually export this. So when you click export, you can actually export this as a CSV or as a spreadsheet. And when you do that, it's going to download a spreadsheet for you. And this spreadsheet right here essentially exports your entire collection. And you can see there's some RRPs or suggested retail prices right here in US dollars. So if I were to add that up right here, all the suggested retail prices that they have for the 600 and some odd sets, that would add up to that $57,245. Now, I honestly think that our collection here in the Lego room is worth more than that. I'm going to say it's ballpark about 100 to 125 thousand US dollars somewhere around there uh, maybe a little less maybe a little more that's just my educated guess you know I, I think it's worth about a hundred and twenty thousand dollars now keep in mind that's retail prices that's not wholesale if I were to wholesale this whole Lego room to a company and in one big chunk you'd get a lot less than that that would require me to sell every single Lego set and verify that all of the pieces are there and all the minifigures are there, instructions are there, and sell it on BrickLink.com. It would be a lot of work to sell all of this Lego, but that's what I potentially value it at based on the numbers here on BrickSet.com. Now, of course, another thing that we could do is we could take that spreadsheet that shows you all of these sets here and we could start to create a value list and we could go through the spreadsheet and go through each set on there and look it up on bricklink.com and we could find a current trending price for those sets and what they're approximately selling for and then we could get an exact number of the approximate value of our lego collection I know Brickset is saying 57,000, but I think that's way underpriced because that's taking suggested retail prices when they originally launched these sets, which a lot of them have appreciated in value. The only way you could truly do it is once again, use that spreadsheet and go through and allocate your own values to it based off the trending prices on bricklink.com. But you can see our collection is fairly big. We're looking at the list here. It's actually four different pages and it starts with the largest sets being in the top there and as we scroll down, the sets got smaller and smaller. But yeah, I'm gonna stick with that number, about 100 to 125,000 US dollars. I know a lot of people want me to answer that question, so there it is. I think that's the answer. If you think I'm way off, let me know, but that's my best educated guess based on all of the knowledge that I have about this Lego room where I spend essentially every single day of my life. Yeah, so it's a pretty big number. It's, uh, it's pretty big, but it's something I'm very passionate about. It's my business and I love it so much and it's like owning a, a really nice sports car in the garage. Some people own sports cars and quads and motorbikes and dirt bikes and boats and yachts and all this different stuff and I have a room full of Lego. That's my passion. That's it. And I'm sure that number grows each and every single month and each and every single day. We got a question here from Nils. He says, uh, did you ever check the statistics from which countries all your subscribers and viewers are from? Love what you and Mrs. Brixie do. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you so much. Actually, yeah, I do check the statistics and here's the uh, graph right here. 33.4% uh, of my viewers are from the United States. 11.6% are from the United Kingdom. 6.2 are from Canada. 3.9 from Australia. 3.2 from the Netherlands. It goes down from there and makes up the remaining percentage with all the different countries in the world, but most of my audience is from the United States. Uh, Mark here has a suggestion in regards to subscribers, which we may or may not already be at 200,000. I'm not sure when this video is coming out, uh, but it says, I have an idea that I want to pass along. It may be cool to get a large container and put a Lego stud for each subscriber. Definitely pick up when on the pick a brick wall, but you could change the color by each year. It'd be really cool to sort of visually see the channel grow. I think that's a fantastic idea. I don't know if I want to count out 200,000 studs though. I don't know if I have it in me counting out 200,000 studs and keeping on top of that, but that would be really cool. 
some sort of large plastic container or like maybe even like an acrylic thing that goes on the wall and it's narrow and you cover a whole wall and you put the studs in there and eventually this thing is full of studs. It would amount to a lot of Lego though. And it would be really neat to see all the different colors of yours. I love the idea. I can't say whether or not I'm going to do that. I do love the idea, though, and that's why I'm, I put it in this question, uh, Q&A session here on Ask Brixie 11. If you, love, if you like the idea and you're viewing this, let us know what you think of that by commenting below. Should we do Mark's idea? I think it's pretty neat. So, everybody, there we have all of the questions answered from Ask Brixie Episode 11. Let me know what you think by commenting below. Remember, submit your questions below if you want them answered in the next episode. Remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff, and thank you so much for coming on by. Farewell!